stories that matter most from reporters who tell them best. 11 News at 10. The stakes got a lot higher today in the Mideast conflict. Yesterday's suicide bombing in Israel triggered the dramatic escalation of events. First was the continuation of Israel's retaliation. The country launched air raids across its border deep into Syria for the first time in decades. The Israelis say they hit a terrorist camp that served as a weapons storehouse and training base for several terrorist organizations, including Islamic Jihad. That is the group that has taken responsibility for yesterday's bombing. At least 19 people and the bomber are dead. Syria and Islamic Jihad each have said Israel is mistaken. Israeli officials also say the airstrike may be an undeclared act of war, but it is a matter of self-defense. The country says it will strike Palestinian terrorists wherever they are, whether that be Syria, Lebanon, or Iran. Today's strike came on the eve of the Yom Kippur War when Syria and Egypt launched a surprise attack against Israel. Syrian officials were outraged and took the matter to the United Nations. The UN Security Council met in emergency session late today out of fears the airstrike could lead to a wider conflict. The Syrian ambassador demanded a quick resolution condemning Israel. It is unclear when the council will vote on that resolution. Washington is urging both sides to show restraint, but officials did say Syria must stop harboring terrorists. The former diplomat whose wife's identity was allegedly leaked by White House officials says her life is in danger. And what's more, Joseph Wilson says the government has yet to offer her protection. Wilson's wife was identified as a CIA operative after he challenged the Bush's administration's reasons for going to war with Iraq. He calls it intimidation. It was rational that if you were an administration and did not want people um, talking about the intelligence or talking about what underpinned the decision to go to war, you would discourage them by destroying the credibility of the messenger who brought you the message. And this administration apparently decided the way to do that was to leak the name of my wife. The leak is now the subject of a Justice Department investigation. The White House is facing a Tuesday deadline to turn over any documents that might help the probe, such as phone logs and emails. A house of worship turned into a shooting gallery today in Georgia. A woman opened fire this morning in an Atlanta church, killing three people. The dead include the church's pastor, who had just finished teaching Sunday school, and the suspect's mother. The shooter then turned the gun on herself. While police have no motive, friends say the suspect recently lost her job and had a history of mental illness. The future of Vegas's famed Siegfried and Roy show is in jeopardy tonight. Roy Horn remains in critical condition after a tiger attacked him. Employees of the show have been encouraged to look for other jobs. Horn was bitten in the neck and dragged off stage by one of his signature white tigers during Friday night's performance. He remains on a ventilator but can communicate with doctors. But they say even if he does recover, it is not clear he will ever again be able to go back to the rigorous performances. Tropical Storm Larry caused problems in southeastern Mexico today. It dumped heavy rains and left behind flooding and some minor damage. But residents are not out of the woods yet. There are two more hurricanes knocking on their door. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, heading back outside here at home, we have a live eagle eye shot of downtown Houston. The streets are wet. It is 76 degrees outside. Dan Metter in for Mario Gomez to tell us more about all that stuff rumbling to the north. Dan? Well, some areas had a lot of rain and some areas didn't have a lot of rain. And uh, if you had a lot of rain, you may be having some problems with some localized flooding. Three to five inches of rain fell in some sections of northern Harris County, putting in the motion uh, the radar from uh, just before noon. I'll show you what has happened and how the showers develop. They began to move in from the northwest, and as they pass the College Station area, there are many reports of uh, windows and uh, broken because of uh, flying debris. Also, power lines were down in the College uh, Station area. Tonight, notice mostly rain in northern Harris County has fallen apart. There is still rain out there, and for about another half hour or so, there is an urban and small stream flooding for northern Harris County. The big stuff, though, is out just to the north of Columbus. That's been dropping more to the south, but we still have some rain, so we still could be seeing wet conditions around southeast Texas. Rain cooled at Bush right now, 69 degrees, dew point 69. The air is humid, the, uh, the relative humidity 100%, so there could be some patchy morning fog in the area. Around the area where it has been raining, temperatures just slid into the 60s. 
otherwise not everybody having temperatures in the 70s. Tonight it's been kind of difficult to find where the front actually is. I just kind of drew a line where I think it actually is because there, there's no much of a wind change anymore. But the boundary has been dropping toward the south. Uh, there's been an upper air disturbance. There has been afternoon heating and the front causing the showers and thunderstorms. Notice behind this front temperatures tonight are a few degrees cooler. Everybody else having temperatures in the 70s and even some 80s to have reported tonight out to the west. Well, Kate, moving to the north now, uh, winds are 90 miles per hour, will not be affecting land, will continue to move north and finally to the northeast. And Larry, Larry finally moved inland. This was yesterday. Notice you can see the little bit of a circulation there. Very difficult to find anything tonight. And most of the cloud cover and a lot of the heavy rains tonight have dissipated. They have downgraded Larry to a depression. The winds are 35 miles per hour. If the circulation can stay intact as it moves into the Pacific, Larry will retain its name. Otherwise, then out they'll have to rename it. Also, a very unique situation happening off the west coast of Mexico. These twin storms, Olaf may move to the north first of all, then move into the uh, Gulf of California, and the Nor may follow it. One thing we'll be watching very closely if some of that moisture may end up in uh, Texas by the end of the week. Well, here comes the front into southeast Texas, and we could be seeing another round of thunderstorms tomorrow around southeast Texas. And this system in the front will wash out, and most of the rain will push to the east. This upper level low is the one that may snag some of the moisture from those twin storms and throw it into Texas the next couple of days. We'll be watching that very closely because some of that could be locally heavy if it is ending up into Texas. Our forecast, well, we had up the probability of rainfall. I have 30 percent, but tonight the computer models are indicating that it could be up to 50 percent. So we could be seeing more rain, more showers and thunderstorms tomorrow as that little front will be somewhere in the area. By Tuesday, the front completely washes out. We'll be seeing some partly cloudy skies, but temperatures uh, not quite as cool as we had last week. Remember last week, uh, temperatures were ending up in the 50s in the morning time. Not quite that cool, but we'll be seeing some sunshine by the end of the week and maybe more rain by the end of the next weekend. Otherwise than that, we still have some rain around, and if you have any traveling to do, please be careful because there has been reports of some flooding, Sherman. All right, good advice. Right. Thanks, Dan. A few months ago, it just didn't seem possible, but it happened today when a popular pastor returned to church and his strength is spreading to others. A well-known Houston pastor had an emotional homecoming today at his pulpit. In July, Chris Wright was hit on the highway while pushing his car out of traffic after he'd run out of gas. He tells 11 News reporter Natasha Ganem he is hoping others will draw strength from his suffering. Back from being down, not from being out. Pastor Christopher Wright! This man of God returned to his ecstatic flock, now a man with a lot of steel plates, screws, and short-term memory loss. But Pastor Chris Wright thanks God. A car accident spared his ability to fulfill his holy mission. It's my life, and I, I would have rather have died. Pastor Wright can't remember the SUV throwing him into the middle of 290 last July. He says the last thing he can remember is prophetic. Right before the accident, he was teaching vacation Bible school. The topic, long suffering. What better person to this congregation to have such a tragedy and then come back and is not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. It'll take a great deal of physical therapy before Pastor Wright can take a step without a walker or a wheelchair. The stiffness of his tin man-like body is the first thing he thinks of when he opens his eyes in the morning. To go ye therefore and preach the gospel unto every living creature. But when he stands at the pulpit, the fire erupts from within. Oh, oh I would. Rushes through the congregation. He's a leader determined to use his long suffering to strengthen his followers. Natasha Ganame, 11 News. Welcome home. The sports world held its homecoming today in several different cities. In Houston, the wow was over yow. And in football, the big E returned to the big D. But did he have a big day?
Arizona running back Emmett Smith found out you can go home again, but it's not always a pleasant experience. In fact, and sometimes it could be downright painful. Good evening, everyone. I'm Butch Alcindor along with the big fella. We'll have more on Emmett in just a minute. But first, we start with East meeting West again. As Yao Ming returned from Beijing, ready to begin his quest to put the Rockets in the playoffs. Out of the way. At seven foot six inches tall, Rocket Center Yao Ming will never be inconspicuous. And as he prepares to start his second season in the NBA, his expectations are high. Yeah, I, I haven't um, been with the team yet, so I, I'm not exactly sure. But I, I trust that every year will be better and better. You know, as you get seasons behind you in this league, uh, you, you learn to cope with everything, and it's it's not the easiest thing in the world. And from where he came from and the different culture and everything. It was like 10 times harder, and he did a remarkable job. So I think as intelligent a young man as he is and the way he handles things, it's going to be, I think we'll see a big, big difference this year. Meanwhile, the Rockets have already had three days of training camp in Galveston. So will Yao join them on the court tomorrow? Well, we hope so. We get everything done, yeah. I mean, he needs to get a good night's rest because I've made this trip. I imagine how he's feeling right now. It's really tough. After Yao catches up on his sleep, the next order of business is to get to know the Rockets' new head coach, Jeff Van Gundy. Um, you know, it's a new experience for me. I've never uh, had to switch coaches on on the, on a team, the same team before. It's it's a it's a test for me. Well, Yao's homecoming was pretty much pain-free. Too bad Emmett Smith couldn't say the same thing as the Cardinals traveled to Dallas. Now, Jerry's showing Emmett some love as long as he didn't have to pay him any money. Emmett was hit hard every time he touched the ball, rushing for minus one on six carries before leaving with a sprained shoulder. Meanwhile, Quincy and the boys went to the Razzle Dattles. Dazzle. And Carter guns it deep 51 yards for Terry Glenn, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Dallas went on to win it 24-7 on a very very emotional so day for Emmett. Yeah. It's not about a whole lot of this me against my teammates over there and about the diamond and the rough. It's not about that. I had a chance to see my daughter play soccer this weekend. And that's what I'm going to take with me. Okay, staying with the reunion theme, Steve Mariucci was back in the city by the bay. And Terrell Owens, well, he was talking, but he did his talking by catching a touchdown pass right there. The game was closed, but the Niners beat the Lions 24-17. Reunion number three was at Lambo, where Brett Favre and Mike Holmgren talked about the good old days. And then Favre burned the Seahawks for two touchdown passes. That one went to Houston native Donald Driver. 35-13, Packers a winner in that one. Well, you have to see this turning to the majors now. The Yankees are going back to the ALCS for the fifth time in the last six years. The Bronx Bombers scored six in the fourth as they took on the Twins today. And Derek Derek Jeter added this solo homer late in the game as the Yankees eliminated the Twins 8-1. to one. But they still don't know who they will face because David Ortiz smacked this two-run double in the eighth, giving the Red Sox a 5-4 to four win over the A's. So that series is now all even at two apiece. And in Atlanta tonight, Aramis Ramirez. Cubs picked him up in a big trade from the Pirates, and he's still delivering every day. He said adios to this two-run homer and adios to the Braves. The Cubbies will now face the Marlins in the NLCS after dropping the Braves 5-1. to one. Let's check out some golf action. Tiger Woods picked up his fifth victory on the year. He would win today at the American Express Championship by two shots. And in World Cup soccer action, Germany, Germany shot Team USA, eliminating the defending champions 3-0 in the semifinals. And for the Cubs, it is the first time they won a postseason series since 1908. All right, you know, I'm very impressed. You've got friends in high places over yes, there. Definitely. Good to see you, yeah? All right. <laughs> Texans were on the minds of plenty of families today. But why? Good evening, I'm Deborah Duncan. Tomorrow on 11 News This Morning, we'll update you on the latest news from overnight, plus weather and traffic every 11 minutes. Also, how many millions are there in a billion? Jonathan Walton hits the streets to ask Houston, and the answers just don't add up. Join us tomorrow morning from 5 till 8. It may be hard to believe, but it's already been more than a year since the Texans kicked off their first season. To celebrate, the Museum of Fine Arts held a family day, and there was plenty of fun for everybody. Families got a chance as well to see the new exhibit at the museum called First Down Houston, the birth of an NFL franchise. 
The photographs document the Texans' inaugural season. Great exhibit. And you can just use your regular season membership over there at the yeah, Museum just of Yeah, walk Finance. right on in. Yeah, they it's know a great you. exhibit. They know them by first name over there. That's right. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>